Hello and welcome to LinkedIn Heroes. I'm sitting here with Dino Pichello. Dino Pichello, if I pronounce that correctly? Correct, yes. Business Development at Suncorp Bank, uh, also the founder of Ubervation and founded National Finance Day, which we're going to talk about very shortly. So please uh, welcome to LinkedIn Heroes, Dino Pichello. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Nathaniel. Thanks for having me on the show. Pleasure to have you here. Yeah. Can you tell us a bit about your story and how you got into where you are today? God, where do I start? All right. Um, I mean, there's a lot to it, but I suppose if I go back when I first started the corp into the corporate world, I came straight out of high school. So I had a, um, a good friend of my father's who was an area manager back at one of the major lenders there, and he goes, come and have a chat. And long story short, two weeks later, I was employed and I started as a teller kind of cash for about a year and then evolved, went through training courses, moved up and have always, and I suppose my passion grew for finance. I suppose I didn't come out of high school going, oh, I want to go be a business development manager and work in banks. You know, how boring is that? But the passion grew with that. I moved from that major bank to Suncorp, um, in between had a couple of self-employed businesses. Um, but now moving into Suncorp and been with Suncorp for seven years and thoroughly enjoying the industry that I'm in, particularly the broker industry that I get to play in. Awesome. And tell us about the National Finance Day that you started. How long ago was that now? Yeah, that's been three years now. Okay. So that originally started because when I first joined the, the broker channel, I was doing a lot of research around what brokers do, what their perception was in the market. And unfortunately, when you Google it, and what I was reading across social media sites, it wasn't extremely positive. So, but I was getting into the business a lot deeper and I was understanding what these professionals brought to the marketplace. And I thought they need some further awareness. The market needs a little bit more education around what these brokers do. So I thought what better way to actually have a national day of recognition for the industry. So for brokers and consumers alike, but then have a lead up throughout that day as well, or for that day, I should say. So people are understanding it, they're getting educated throughout it. Brokers are getting some positive recognition rather than just that constructive feedback all the time. Yeah, I hear you, okay. And so what are some of the challenges that the finance brokers and the finance industry professionals face currently? Yeah, so one, if you still go on that perception, that's one, and you can look at the finance industry as a whole at the moment now, Nathaniel, and we're going through that Royal Commission, so there's a lot of press around that, that's a lot of profits before customers and the like, which I think is going to be fantastic for mm -hmm. the industry. So we're going to see some really positive benefits or positive changes for consumers. So I think it's working through that. Um, that might not be a real quick fix, but 6, 12, 18, 20 months, I think finance professionals, brokers included in that, are really going to get some benefit out of having changes that are going to be really opportunistic for consumers as well as for what they can actually bring to the market. So mm. that perception at the moment, like if you write today, would be the biggest challenge for these professionals. Right, okay. Mm. Well, this leads me on to the next section of what I wanted to talk about because you're very active on LinkedIn, or, which is obviously um, my social media platform of choice as well. And um, when we caught up for coffee last week, I think it was, and you were talking about, well, you know, and your role is, you know, it's not a sales focused role. Um, so uh, I noticed your content just adds a lot of value. And I think that um, some of the entrepreneurs in the finance space or some people in the client facing sales role um, get in their own, own way a little bit because they're quite focused on, well, what's my return on investment, you know, spending a lot of time on LinkedIn. Um, what would your advice be to those professionals on, you know, to get their message out there? Yeah. Listen, there's a lot of stuff that goes on on that platform, right? There's, I don't know how many billions of users are on there now, but there's a lot of stuff on there. So I, I always say if you're going to start building that brand and get recognised to help you stand out across it is, let me get this right because this is what I always write as well, is that successful personal branding demands time, consistency and value. Yes. And I think if you do that and you actually break that time, consistency and value add piece down into different umbrellas, and place the the time piece as you look you can look at I talk about having a PPE strategy under that umbrella so it's all about the preparation the posting and the engagement mm -hmm. so that really comes under the time and for anybody that thinks they can do personal branding effectively for under half an hour every single day uh, under those three PPE strategies you're absolutely kidding yourself mm. so I think people need to 
get out of it that you can go dump a post in, leave a couple of comments, and you're done for the day, and you can come back to it tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Because that doesn't work. Um, the other one, so you've got time on there. The consistency piece is every day. Yeah. Right. And tell us about what are some of the things that um, the outcomes that you've got from uh, being active on LinkedIn. You know, was it what you expected? I know that we've got posters up around the office here at Space Cubes, and you're speaking at you know an event coming up, um, get amplified and. Uh, I'm, I'd imagine that a lot of these sort of opportunities are starting to come your way and maybe to talk about finance, but they may also be to talk, talk about you know, LinkedIn marketing. Yeah, absolutely. They, they do. Um, and Get Amplifies is a great example of that. I've done personal branding talks within Suncorp itself um, to brokers and our third party channels on how to do it. But I talk very, the practical approach to building a brand. Mm -hmm. And 98% yeah, of my time is on LinkedIn. So I'm not a technical expert of it. So if you're going to Sales Navigator and you want to um, generate business leads, that's your field of expertise, that's not mine. But if you want to actually build a brand and build a good follower base and then take the next step of actually generating leads and generating business off your brand, whether that's personal or business, then I can help you with the front end. Yeah. yeah. And one of the things I noticed that I think is probably not as ob obvious, and I, I certainly didn't expect it, is when I started becoming more active with posting content, um, that I'll get a lot of opportunities, but they're not showing up in the comments of the post or the videos, they're coming through as direct messages. So I think a lot of other people don't see, you know, what opportunities are actually coming from LinkedIn. Absolutely. I think you, you've got to keep in mind as well, everything that you put out, it's probably, it does get amplified maybe two or three times offline because other people are talking about it. Other people might send a link to that post and go, hey, is this relevant to you? So there is that traction. It's not just the impression that you're actually going to look online. Mm -hmm. And yeah, absolutely, that happens and you get direct messages and it comes from all, all sorts of angles. And it's wonderful because you get to meet some amazing people on that journey. Yeah, okay, great. <laughs> um, so I want to talk about, um, like, are there any key attributes, habits, or things that you've practiced over the years that have been attributable to your success as a business professional? Yeah, um, do you know what? I have a, probably a daily routine that I stick to. And when I say daily, I mean Saturday and Sunday as well. Right. right? So it doesn't drop off just because it's the weekend. So that's, uh, I get six hours of sleep every night. People might have heard this previously, but I, get up, I go to bed at 10 every night religiously, and I ensure I get up at four o'clock. So that six hours works for me now, particularly I'm on a healthy lifestyle regime, so it works really well. And do you know what, that first two hours from four to six is all my social media. So it's all that first part of that PPE, it's all the preparation side. And I suppose the preparation and the engagement side to a degree, posting comes into there, but that could only take you two minutes if you've done the prep work for the two hours of the prior day. And then in the evening, it's another two hours. So you're spending four hours a day on LinkedIn? Yeah. I'll do four hours because the engagement, wow. the more that you're spending on there, the more of that engagement time that you actually need to invest yeah. into that platform. Because if you're not, if you are responding to everybody and then all of a sudden you're missing three or four people out, um, what's the perception of those three or four people if they're going, well, he's responded to 50 people today, why didn't I get a response? And I think you, you need to look at it as if you had 50 people in the room and they were all asking you a question, would you ignore three or four of them? I certainly mm. wouldn't. So what happens when, uh, so you've got 31,000 odd followers now. Yeah. What happens when you get 60,000? Are you going to do eight hours? <laughs> we'll, we'll probably get some help. <laughs> we might get some help. I've started to get some help. My, um, my two daughters have started playing videographer with a few of the videos. So oh, cool. A few people are asking, do I have a cameraman that follows me around 24-7? Awesome. No, I don't. I don't get paid that much. But um, you know, they're nearly 16 and one's 12, so they know how to operate an iPhone yeah, quite effectively. Awesome. Oh, yeah. So they help me out when they're with me and over the weekends and we do some footage. Yeah, cool. Well, budding social media entrepreneur uh, there, yeah. I'm sure. Get him in early. <laughs> <laughs> Dino, <laughs> if you could be a superhero, who would you choose and tell us why? You know, can, can I evidence this one? I'm going to try and not pull the mic, but I do have my Flash socks on today. <laughs> so I have to say Flash. And uh, I think because if I had this, this ability to work extremely fast, and I could do my four hours of LinkedIn every day, and I could do that in four seconds. Yeah. God, how, how much time? And they say time's more valuable than money sometimes, and you could argue vice versa. But mm. God, if you could create more time by working at a superhuman pace, mm -hmm. why not? And plus, my kids absolutely love the flash that's on Foxtel. So. Yeah.